Welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to edit Milky Way photos using Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now the first thing that we need to do is change up a few of Lightroom's default settings. You'll notice, for example, that the color profile at the top probably says something like Adobe Color. That's not what we want right here, so instead click this little icon and then go down to Adobe Standard V2. You'll see later in this video why that's the one that I recommend, but for now let's close out of the profile options. So if you scroll down, you'll pass a few of the other default settings, like the details panel right here, and I'll come back to that one later. Let's go down to the lens correction panel instead. Right here, you're gonna to wanna to keep the chromatic aberrations box checked, but then also check the box for enable profile corrections. This is going to fix distortion and vignetting, although distortion isn't really an issue in this photo, so I'm gonna put that slider back down to zero, and I also think that it really overdid the vignetting correction, so let's slide that one down to about plus 25 instead. And now that that's out of the way, let's start off our editing by cropping this photo. I actually like the composition right now, but I do think that it's a little bit tilted, so let's straighten out the horizon and then close out of that. At this point, we're gonna start with the basic panel and then work our way down through Lightroom. And typically the first thing that I edit is gonna be the exposure slider, but I don't think that this photo needs any, so I'll just leave that one at zero. Now before you do any other adjustments, it's really important to get a neutral colored white balance. Right now, maybe because of the light pollution, everything looks a little bit yellowish green. So I'm gonna use about 3,400 or so on the white balance, and then plus three on tint. And if you're having a hard time finding the right white balance, you could always boost up the vibrance and saturation sliders all the way, and then aim for about an even amount of blue and yellow in the sky. So that looks good, let's close out of those. And next, one thing that you probably wanna do is make the Milky Way stand out a little bit more against the surroundings. And that's why I'm just gonna increase the contrast right here, and then boost the highlights as well. And then I'm gonna lower down the shadows a little bit just to make the foreground even more of a silhouette. And that looks good. Now the next two sliders here are gonna add some contrast, but they're also kind of aggressive. So I'm not gonna go beyond say plus 10 and then minus 10. Now this next section is called presence. And basically this has to do with the structure of your photo. You can really see that as I boost the texture and clarity sliders. And clearly this is a very strong result. I usually end up decreasing these two sliders instead. So let's do that right here. And then I actually tend to increase the dehaze slider because I like the local contrast that it adds. So that's pretty good. And now we can move on to the vibrance and saturation sliders. So vibrance, when you boost it all the way, it actually affects almost all of the photo, including the sky right here. And then saturation, if I go back and increase that one, this has more of an impact on parts of the photo that were already very colorful, like the center of the Milky Way and then the light pollution along the bottom of the frame. So you can play around with these sliders however you want. For Milky Way shots, I usually boost them both about equally. Right here, I'm gonna use maybe plus 30. And next up is the tone curve. Now you could adjust this one by clicking on the curve diagram right here, but I'm gonna undo that because I think that the sliders are a little bit more intuitive. Now the highlight slider, you can see it really just pinpoints the stars. Look at how little of the photo this is actually affecting. So I actually recommend decreasing this one just a little because it's gonna give you smaller stars and just a more refined feel to the photo. And the next one down is the light slider. This one adds some really nice contrast and kind of a glow to the Milky Way. So I'm gonna boost that to maybe plus 35. And now the photo is definitely too bright so let's jump back up to the exposure slider in the basic panel and push that one down to maybe negative 0.25 or so just to compensate. And I'll say that's actually one of my favorite combinations in Lightroom. I bump up the light slider and then bring down the exposure slider. Now the other two sliders under the tone curve are gonna affect the darker areas of the photo. So for Milky Way photography, that's pretty much all of the photo. And actually right here, I'm just gonna leave them both at zero. And the next panel down is the HSL panel. This is one of the ways that Lightroom has to adjust your colors. I don't recommend changing these sliders around too much because it can introduce a lot of color noise, but I'm just gonna do a few small corrections right here. Uh, specifically, let's do a minus 12 adjustment to some of the warmer tones in the photo. It's not a major adjustment, but it's gonna shift some of those colors a little bit orange rather than green. Now, I won't mess with the other sliders under this panel. There's actually a tool that I like a lot more for color correction in Milky Way photography, and that's the color grading panel right here. 
So this is actually a relatively new panel in Lightroom. If you don't see it, if you've got one called split toning instead, you might just want to update your version of Lightroom. But either way, this is a really good tool to improve the colors in your Milky Way photos. Now I wouldn't mess with the brightness adjustments that you can see under each of these diagrams. Uh, we've already edited the brightness of this photo. So instead, the things that you should focus on are these color wheels right here. They can really improve the colors in your photos. In this case, just like with a lot of Milky Way shots, I really like the results with a bit of a blue tone added to the shadows. Uh, you can experiment to find out what looks the best, but then to balance out the blue in the shadows, I would usually do kind of an orange color in the highlights. So here's how it looks if I adjust the highlights color wheel, and I don't actually like how narrow this is. It only seems to affect the brightest stars, so I'm gonna undo that, and instead, it's usually better for Milky Way photography to use the mid-tones color wheel instead if you're trying to adjust the colors in your sky. So let's put that at kind of a reddish-orange color, and I think this is looking really nice. Let's just do a quick before and after. So I'm gonna hide these adjustments. This is the before, and this is the after. Huge improvement right here. Now the detail slider is the next one, and Lightroom's default settings here really aren't that great. Uh, 40 sharpening is a bit too strong. Let's just decrease that to about 30. And then I recommend turning the radius down to 0.5 and the detail slider all the way up to 100. And that might sound kind of extreme, but you can look at the results for yourself. They tend to be much better than the defaults and you're not gonna get those blocky halos around the edges of your subject. Next up, for the masking section, I recommend holding down the Alt or the Option key on your keyboard and then adjusting the slider to get a preview of the image. Now in this preview, any of the dark areas are the spots that aren't going to be affected by your sharpening. So right here, I definitely don't want the foreground to be sharpened. So I'm gonna pick about, let's say 65 on the masking slider. Next up is noise reduction. So let's increase that to about, say 15. And you could go a lot farther than that, but the more that you go, the more plasticky that your photo is gonna look. Now the next two settings are perfectly fine as they are. I'm kind of in the habit of putting detail to zero and then contrast to 100. Doesn't really make a big difference though. And then for the color noise, this one's actually a really big deal. So pay attention to this purple colored nebula in the photo right here. And then watch the detail in the nebula when I'm boosting this up to 100. You can see that we lose a lot of color detail right here. Even 25 is too much for me. So I'm gonna put this down to about plus 12. And the other sliders can still make a difference. Uh, let's see, look what happens when I put the smoothness down to zero. You can see these big blotches of color. And I actually tend to put smoothness all the way up to 100. I guess that I just like the 100 on some of these. Uh, and then detail goes to about 70. That whole combination is my personal favorite for keeping a lot of the colors around the stars without getting too much color noise. So now let's zoom out and then take another look at the photo. What all do we have left to change? Well, I think that we've hit the limit of the global adjustments, but there are still a few things that I'd like to fix. Uh, first off, I'd like to get rid of some of the yellow tones near the horizon, and then of course I want to make the Milky Way stand out even more. So let's do that with some local adjustments. Right here, I'm gonna create a gradient adjustment to fix the yellow along the horizon. And with that gradient, I'm just gonna press the letter O on my keyboard, and that generates a preview of everything that it's going to affect. Now I don't want to affect the actual foreground right here, so I'm gonna use this clever feature that Lightroom has called range masking. I can select a luminance mask right there, and then shift the slider up to about 65, and you can see that the dark foreground is no longer affected. Very cool feature. So now let's make this area more blue in color. I would say maybe minus 10. Although now the whole photo actually looks kind of blue, so I'm just gonna scroll down to the white balance back to the basic panel, and then shift everything to be a little bit more yellow. Okay, so then the next step is gonna be to make a radial filter, just to make some of the areas in the sky look a little bit better. So let me make that, and I'm gonna add in some blue, and I'm also going to modify this mask with a brush tool, I'm gonna paint on some other areas throughout the photo that the radial filter isn't normally going to cover. So let's see, let's get that area right there. And over here. All right. And now onto the Milky Way itself. So what I like to do right here to boost the Milky Way is actually to darken everything else. So I'm gonna do one huge radial filter. And again, you can press O to see the preview 
and then shift that around until it covers the Milky Way. Now uncheck this little invert box right here, and you'll see that it flips to the other area, and then you can make another range mask to get rid of the foreground once again. So now that I've done that, we're gonna press O to hide the preview, and now you can just start darkening the area around the Milky Way with the exposure slider, uh, contrast, shadows, really just whatever you think looks the best. After that's done, one of the best ways to make the Milky Way pop is to do some local adjustments on the actual dust structures that you can see in the sky. So open up the brush tool, and we're gonna start by darkening selective parts of the photo. So press O again for the preview, and also make sure that the flow of your brush is relatively low. I'm gonna keep mine at around 40. Now with a really small brush, you're gonna start painting on the dark structures in the Milky Way, especially some that are really faint that you'd like to bring out. And this part can take a bit, so let's just fast forward. And here's everything that I've painted now that I'm zoomed out. And when I press O to close out of the preview, I can just start darkening these areas, and you can really tell that this has potential to be very dramatic. And I don't recommend going too far, although of course it's completely up to you, but it's really easy to darken these areas with some of the different sliders and really bring out the structure of the Milky Way. I think that looks pretty good right there. And then looking at the rest of the photo, I do still notice some of these lights at the bottom of the frame. So let's just zoom in and then clone those out real quick. And not everyone's gonna wanna clone things out of their photo, so I won't spend too long right here. Now, there's some other stuff like airplane trails throughout the photo that you might wanna get rid of, but I'm not gonna do that here. Um, I do still see a few hot pixels in the photo. Normally Lightroom would clone these out automatically, but it looks like it missed a few, so let me get rid of those manually. And I think that that does it. So now I'm going to zoom out and just look at everything one more time. So is there anything left that still needs to be changed? Well, one thing that you could do is to go back to the color profile section and then start to look through some of Lightroom's different presets. In a way, you could say that these are kind of like Instagram filters, so maybe you don't want to do any of this, but I always find it interesting just to go through a little bit and see if I like how any of them look. Uh, let's see. Right here, I do kind of like this modern 4 profile. It's obviously a little bit strong, but let's lower it down to zero. I want to show you something. So, this is why earlier I said to pick the Adobe Standard V2, because for whatever reason, all of these fancy profiles turned down to zero, are gonna be identical to Adobe Standard V2. I don't know why that's the one that they're identical to, but that's just how it is. So if you do set that one in the beginning, you can pick any of these profiles and you're not gonna ruin all of your color work. You could always just put the profile down to a low value like 10 or 20, and you won't change too much about the photo. Right here, I like the look at about 35. So let's close out of that. And then the last trick that I like to use is to turn Lightroom's background color to black. This just lets me double check how the edges of the photo look. And right here, I think that the right hand side of the photo is a little bit too bright. And then the left hand side has some colors that I'd like to fix. It's gonna be really easy. I'll just add a couple radial adjustments. Uh, let me add one right here. I'll speed this part up for you. And that's all that it took. My editing is now complete. So let's just pop up the unedited photo first. Here's how that looks. And then this is the final result. I think that it's a huge improvement. Now, I hope that you learned something from this tutorial. Check out the other videos on this screen for more tips and tricks for working with Milky Way photography. You can subscribe by clicking the circle in the middle of your screen. Thanks for watching. I'm Spencer Cox, and I'll catch you next time.